without even looking, without even glancing that way, that's going to look okay, but I got something that's way better. And I'm going to build it here, and you're going to love it. And then he builds it, and it, you hate it. You hate it. I want to take the time in this video to talk about hearing aids. All right? Because I wear hearing aids to hear in general, you know, conversations with people, intelligibility. And it also has radically improved my listening experience listening to music. I can listen to music without these things in but and, you know, do some equalization to try to get it close to what it's supposed to be, but these blow that whole thing right out of the water. Now, I've got what's called moderate hearing loss. It's not severe, but it's not light. Light would be from just aging, naturally aging. You lose your hearing over, over that time. Um, mine is caused by uh, hearing damage from construction for many years, being careless and not protecting my ears. To be honest, when I was younger, <laughs> doing all kinds of loud things, including listening to music really loud, I thought in the future, you know, I'd just get bionic ears. They'll have a cure for that. By the time I lose my hearing, they'll have a cure for that. Uh, that was wrong to think that way. They have that much faith in what they can pull off. So, yeah, I've got moderate hearing loss, and it's centered around 4K. You know, there's quite a uh, dip in the response, you could say, at that frequency. And that's what these things do. Now, that's what these things do now, okay? Because, okay, we're going to have to go back to, say, 2014 when I first got these hearing aids. I had a hearing aid before that, back in 2005 or something, and I only had one because that's all I could afford at the time. These things are expensive. And I lost that. And then it was many years, oh, <laughs> you know, like almost 10 before I got a new pair. Because if you have hearing loss, you're probably going to have it in two years. You're going to need two. You're going to need a pair. So 2014, I went and I got these, um, the lady that tested my hearing, tested my hearing, and then she ordered the hearing aids and set them up. And the next visit, I went in and she stuck them in and it was like a light bulb came out. I mean, a flash bulb. It was like amazing, the difference. So that's where I was with that. Those two visits to the audiologist up until uh, just over last uh, one year ago, say this time last year. Well, before this last year, a year and a half ago, let's say that. OK, year and a half ago, I was working on this room, getting this room set up. And I said to myself, well, now would be a good time to go and have your hearing rechecked to see if they can improve it. So that's what I did. I had my hearing tested uh, by another young woman and um, not the same one as before. Same place, but someone else had taken over in the meantime. And um, she was all enthusiastic and talking about how much better my hearing would be with this new technology that they had. She set up the new hearing aids and it's very difficult to judge. In case you've never been in this situation before, it's very difficult to judge sitting in the office, just listening to her talk. You can hear things that might not be um, good, but um, you might think that, well, I was thinking anyway, that it was just me trying to get used to them. Well, as it turns out, when I got home, they were basically unusable. There was way too much high frequency uh, re uh, boost and they were very shrill and piercing whenever um, somebody spoke and they had some sibilance. You'd, you'd hear that s, that S sound. And it was not coming from the person. It was like right here in my ears, like beaming into my ears from the thing. So <laughs> I called up and I said, well, you're going to have to redo the, the test because these are not good. And she said, well, you're, I tested your hearing and it hasn't changed that much from last time. I said, well, you're going to have to, you're going to have to 
Oh, and, I, and here's the best part. I'm leaving the, the best part. She took my old ones, these ones here, before when they were set up, still good, but maybe improvable. She took those and she tuned those up with this new setting that she had for the new set. And she didn't save the old settings. So I went back and she tried to dial in the new ones and she tried to dial in my old ones, which are in my ears now. And she wasn't successful because I left again after that appointment and I went home and still way too bright, way too piercing. All right. I was at the point where I couldn't wear them. <laughs> so, the, you know, you can imagine my frustration, but that's just two appointments. I called up again, made another appointment. This time she was gone. She had enough of me, I guess. I can be a little bit, um, I can show my frustration a little bit. Okay. And younger people these days, they simply, they don't, they don't, they don't have to, they don't have to put up with, with, um, an old guy's frustration. So I was handed off to another audiologist that worked at the same location and he started to set up according to what he thought they should be. And basically same result. I, um, left and went home, still couldn't wear them. Um, made an appointment and went back. This carried on for five more appointments until I wound up with them well not like they are now but they were okay they sounded like they are now the only problem is that the limiter would engage way too soon like i couldn't listen to music that had a steady output like um you know you listen to typical rock music not that i listen to a huge amount of that but i couldn't because that steady amount of output above 70 decibels, 70 decibels, nothing, by the way, above set, these would shut off completely. They completely shut off. So I was basically stuck with either turning it down to the point where you could barely enjoy it or just listen to stuff that had a lot of fast transients, which is, you know, jazz, classical. A lot of the other music that I listen to has a lot of fast transients, not a steady drone. So they didn't engage the limiter and I could listen to those fairly normally. So once again, I got to thinking that maybe I should make another run at it. <laughs> and uh, this is a different place. I made an appointment and Okay, I don't want to say like long story short, because really the lesson in this is how much they ignored what I was saying and making all of these repeat visits necessary. I went through seven more appointments at this new place before I'm at where I am now. And in my first visit to the new place, I went over my frustration and the problems I had with the last place. This is after he tested my hearing again. And I explained to him that the ones that I'm wearing at that time, they sound good other than the limiter is turned down too low. I said, if anything, the right ear can be increased a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit, the volume on that one is a little bit low. What did he do? He ignored all that and he set up these new hearing aids the way that the science told him to do it. The measurements told him to do it. And I put those in and it was like a lightning bolt whenever he opened his mouth. The same thing with these very shrill, piercing, high frequency sounds coming into my ears. What I found most frustrating about that was that he ignored what I said about my hearing aids when I went in, that they sounded good. Right? You would think, okay, because these guys, all these people that work in these places, especially when they're dealing with a public that, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of people don't know anything about anything, right? So they make analogies to try to explain things. Like if they say you're a carpenter, because that's what I put as my occupation 
carpenter. I don't say I'm a YouTube big shot or anything like that. I say I'm a carpenter. So he's making analogies about a carpenter. So an analogy came to me at the time <laughs> that if he was to call up a carpenter to come and build a fence for him and said, look at that fence over there, that's what I want it to look like. Then the carpenter goes and said, well, yeah, that, uh, that looks okay without even looking at it. Without even looking, without even glancing that way, that's going to look okay, but I got something that's way better. And I'm going to build it here, and you're going to love it. And then he builds it, and it, you hate it. You hate it. So, yeah, he ignored <laughs> that what I had was good, good enough for what I wanted. It just needed adjustment. So, eventually we got there. He finally did look at these and he made adjustments, especially the limiter. And he also boosted the output in this ear a little bit. Finally, the last um, appointment, I have them where they are now and they are truly good. Okay. So I don't know, cautionary tale for anyone going to look for hearing aids, especially if you love listening to music. Keep in mind that these uh, audiologists have, like for job number one, is uh, intelligibility and not sound quality. All they're interested in is hitting the numbers on their test setup. I should say one other thing about this is the type of hearing aid I have. It's the one that loops over your ear and there's a, this is not a pipe, it's a wire that goes to what's called a receiver down here. This is actually a speaker, and that's the reason why, you know, it works so well, because this speaker is right inside your ear canal. And I should also point out that the, um, the thing that it fits into, this little rubber thing here, is ventilated. All right. What I find is that they want to push on you an included one, uh, like a solid one, that has no holes in it. And what that does is it pipes everything you hear, except for the very low frequency stuff, through this device. And the, the way you really want to be using this, in reality, if you enjoy music and want to enjoy music, because the newer ones, you can get a music program put on there and have a regular hearing program. You'll have the music program. The way you want to use this is just to, just to boost those frequencies that you can't hear as well anymore, like the fill in. You don't want to be running everything through this. Otherwise, just put on a pair of good headphones and, and equalize from there, right? So yeah, that's my long-winded tale about hearing aids. And I hope it helps out somebody that's thinking about getting them.